In today's FPV news, we got some good news, and let's get started. So first of all, we have a couple new products that are being released currently. We're not going to be looking at them because they're not online just yet, but I just got the word about it, which we'll be seeing them in the upcoming days. One, Skyzone. Again, you might be like, what the hell is Skyzone going to do now? Well, they're remaking, or we could say refreshing, their O2 line, their Skyzone goggles, the O2 line. They're putting OLEDs and also the Rapid Mix. I think that's what they're calling it inside those goggles. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to take a module or it's just going to have a pre-built uh, Rapid Mix module inside, which, which this is the module that's competing with the Rapid Fire, by the way. And that's really interesting. I don't know the full specs just yet, but all I know it's using OLEDs, Rapid Mix, and I don't know if it's going to have a module bay or not. And I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be a very at a very competitive price because DJI is really spanking the market, at least the goggle market. So that's one thing. Also, we have some other news as well. There's another company in the works of a new HD system. Now, it's a proprietary, well, not proprietary. I don't want to say proprietary yet because I don't know, but it's not um, OEM. So it's not gone to another company and worked with them to do it. No, they're actually doing everything in-house. So that's going to be very interesting. I can't speak about that and I can't say who, but mo all, just about all of you probably know who it's going to be or might know it's going to be. Could be Skyzone, could be Orca, could be one of those two, or maybe both, who knows? So that's something to keep in mind there. Now, motors, let's talk about motors here. So these, there's nothing special really, they're 2203 motors, 0.5. But the reason why I'm so excited for these, more than the 2004s, is depending on when you started this hobby. So if you started back the Eoshin Wizard era, or the Eoshin Racer 250 era, or the Eoshin Falcon era. So this is not like from the beginning beginning, this is like kind of when this hobby started to really take off in that area, because Eoshin was the company to give you a complete kit to get started with for some pretty crazy prices, like 350 bucks. You would get like, you know, a screen, or you could get a goggle, the Eoshin uh, VR, V2, DVR, I forgot what the hell they're called. Anyways, th there's one of them called Eoshin Falcon, which was my favorite. And it was a clone of the ZMR250 frame. So it was a six inch quadcopter, but we had five inch propellers on there. And it was rocking 2204 motors. Now the 2204 motors, I always loved. And recently I've been trying to find some older crappy 2204 motors and they're pretty efficient. They're still more powerful than the 2004. And they give you this really nice balance in the middle. Now, I don't know with the current technology and in the current performance of the motors we have now, uh, what a 2204 would be like, but I would say it's going to be pretty awesome. However, that's just me speculating right now. So don't take my word for it, but I am very excited. Um, and also summer is around the corner, or should I say spring is around the corner, and I'm almost done with all my paperwork to keep flying again. So yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting. This is currently in stock. So this is, I think, the first company to make a 2204 variant. We could say 2204. It's 2203.5, but I, I guess they just want to be different. So yeah, that's really nice here. Also, we see Airbot coming back. This is not the first time I've seen it. Now, if you don't know, this Airbot was a pretty big player back then. It had its fuck-ups here and there. But as far as I know is they are the manufacturer. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm 90% certain they're a manufacturer. The manufacturers for a lot of the higher-end ESCs. However, what this kind of tells me, which, and again, this is my speculation, I think the companies that were rebranding through them are not selling as much anymore. So Airbot is coming back with their own product and trying to release it back into the market. So basically their sales dropped. So they're trying to combat that issue with their own products here. And that's what we see here. So we see uh, one ESC. As far as I know, I think, for example, let's just say Hollybro, I think goes to Airbot and some other companies also. You kind of see the signature design in these ESCs. Uh, it looks pretty nice, very simple. They've been doing it for quite a while, so it's not a no-name brand company. And uh, their support is a hit and miss most of the time. Uh, usually, you know, the, the company that's uh, OEMing from them, that's how you get better support. But I don't know how it is now. They're probably trying to make a name again for themselves. Filtration looks really good so far, but it's very difficult to say. For a 20 by 20, is this a really a 20 by 20? Let's just double check, yeah. For 20 by 20, this is probably one that would be recommended for 
uh, a heavy load 20 by 20 like a 6s heavy load we have big fets here i think these are toshibas i could be wrong filtrations look like pretty big caps it's not it's not, it's good it's not perfect but it's good it's really acceptable obviously the size is larger and uh, they're using a double layout board here so one for the logic and one for the power delivery which seems to not have issues so we're gonna see how long that trend's gonna take and and if issues were to arise from such a thing but it seems as if that's a really nice way to do it i guess because you keep your logic hidden and you can just have you know the other company just do uh the power delivery part for you uh so yeah it comes with a capacitor and you can just customize your own connector which is really nice now i forgot to look at the price 50 bucks if it's good if we if i get one in we'll noise test it and if it's good then definitely worth it for a 20 by 20 that could actually it, it'd have to fit in the frame though but it's nice to see that this is a step in the right direction next mumba this is not new but as you can tell we have a usb type c it does have a refresh so they are doing a lot of new things with these but what i really wanted to show you here is not this even though this is really nice but the ese they're sticking with their f50s and f60s because they are really good they are the most bang for your buck ese's you might think oh no this doesn't look like it, it is but this is just without the heatsink so the heatsink is just an extra option here. But these are the F50s, which have decent filtration on board as well. I think it is. Yeah, it is. So yeah, th this one's coming in with the F60. And the prices are starting to go up for Mumba's. You can tell Mumba's been releasing quite a lot into the market, which means that they're doing pretty, pretty well. And, um, you know, they deserve it. I mean, th they've been releasing really good products recently. Very reliable stuff. Daitone's been in the game for ages. Um yeah, they've been in for a while. Um, they've had their hits and misses, especially when they try to release their own video transmitter. I remember I had it overheating. That was a long time ago, maybe like three years ago. And things just changed uh, to the better. Uh, however, their 20 by 20 ESCs, I I'd never recommend on high load, but you can get away with it. But I just do not recommend. Uh, FET's too small. Nice overall design, but nothing too power hungry, such as the AirBot. Like I, even though I haven't tested the AirBot here, I definitely recommend this for a heavy load. And it's just pretty obvious. Like you just look at the FETs, you look at the overall design, power delivery, the FET, the, the capacitors on board. Uh, you're more likely to be better off with something of this nature if you're looking for a 20 by 20 high load. So HLRC also releasing their 2004 motors here. They're having a 3000 KV and 1800 KV. Really nice. 4 to 6S. Uh, this one, I just clicked on it because I thought I got all of them, but I guess I didn't get this one. So this is a 30 amp 20 by 20. I thought it was all in one for some reason. It's just a 30 amp 20 by 20 ESC filtration. Minimal. Again, not recommended for high load. But we do see we have a diode here. This could be a TVS diode, but I could be wrong. Um, but this is nice for protection. Uh, and I think it is a TVS diode. If we scroll down, probably uh, may, they might mention a TVS diode, which is a transient voltage suppression diode which will allow it to kind of, yep, TVS died, uh, reduce uh, high voltage. So that's kind of uh, nice here. And I guess it would also block the inverse polarity as well. So here, I don't know what to think about this. People said this company has been here for a while, but actually I've never really heard of that company. So maybe I, I don't know what's up with that. Now, this is an interesting design. That's the reason why I clicked on it. So what we can see, first of all, is it's using one FET for each phase. And each FET of these is split into half. So there's two FETs into one. And yeah, I mean, for repairability, it's easy, but nobody's really going to repair. I wouldn't even repair this. And you can see they have these glue, this glue on there for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe just to keep everything held down together really properly. Uh, maybe it's the copper is so thin that it gets ripped off when it gets hot or it gets loose. I don't know. I'm, yeah, don't take my word for that. So it is a BL Heli S ESC, as far as I can tell. MP6000, again, it's all-in-one with the F411 RG, built-in RGB LEDs. Where is the built-in RGB LEDs? Oh, here's one, and here's another one. Do we have one on the other side? Nope. Barometer, we don't have barometer. We still have our on-screen display. MP6000 drivers right there. 3.3 um, volt regulator up here. It could be the 5. Maybe that's, I don't know. We'll figure that out later on. It doesn't really matter anyways. Okay, so I was wrong. This is a 20 by 20 here. So the holes are for the 20 by 20. And these little edges right there could, could be, don't take my word for it, could be 
uh, for a 30 by 30 or a uh, crazy bee type layout uh, mounting solution. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> and the USB is straight flush back. It's not pointing down. So if that's something you're looking for, there you go. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. That That's all I could really say about that right now. And well, that's it, guys. Everything's linked down below. Make sure you check those out. Go to the Go Sport channel and come join Ask FPV, where a lot of things are about to change on that application. And you could check some awesome, cool stuff there. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.